we may, yes sir, go ahead. If, if the freshman year is a peak college experience, why are the attrition rates greatest between the freshman and sophomore year? Well-being is high, but engagement is not necessarily high. And then hope comes in there too. So I think, um, I don't think we lose students due to well-being. I think that's part of the equation. I think the, the engagement issue um, and the hope issues are bigger players. Um, they feel good. They feel, I had a lot of students who I counseled out of the University of Kansas who felt great. Um, but they were, um, they weren't connecting with people. They didn't like the coursework. They wanted to be at a smaller university. Um, so we tried to help them find a place that made sense for them. But I don't think the well-being, well-being does not determine if a college drops out, a college student drops out. Um, but I will say they're happier when they get there um, right in the beginning. Um, and some are happy when they go away. We'll, we'll come back to a little bit of that. Um, but I think, uh, I don't know if we're shy about it or if it doesn't fit with our philosophy. I don't know what it is. But like when I said, why go to college I, I, to get a good job? Anybody have like a stomach churning feeling? Anybody say, oh, that's not what we're about? Anyone? Go ahead. What was that about? Well, after 30 years in higher ed, I'm still an idealist. Yeah. I think that people come in order for, to improve a quality of life. Yeah. Or to learn mm -hmm. and not just to, to see dollar signs. Well, now wealth is part of this, mm -hmm. but when people said, um, what do you want for the future? You know, we, we partitioned out wealth and good job. And I think some people may do that in their own minds. A good job may be I get to provide service to other people. A good job may be you know, health care for my family. A good job may be stability in my community. So it's not necessarily, I mean, most of our students do not become wealthy. You know, and they choose, they choose majors that they know will not lead them to wealth. Um, so I think this good job is, I think we have lumped it together though. I do. Anybody else had that, that sickening feeling, oh, he's, he's going to turn us into Botex? Yep. Yeah, I mean, to me, you come to college to learn to be who you're going to be. And that is sort of in all spheres of your life. So certainly there's an intellectual development and um, that would apply to me in a job. But I would hope that you develop then all of the values and meaning of life. I'm an idealist as well after the same amount of time. I'm there with you, yeah. but I'm imagining myself yeah. writing my first tuition check for parish. Mm -hmm. And I'm imagining, ah, uh, he's going off to learn more about himself. That's why I'm paying this twenty thousand dollars for the semester right now. That's where he's going. He just doesn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I'm writing this check because he's picking my nursing home. And I want him to feel I want him to know a lot about me and a lot about where I'm going to end up and have the bucks to put me in a nice facility. Well, I mean, I've, I've written that first and last tuition check last year. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, I, I felt the same way as a parent as I do as a higher ed professional, that I was very excited that I felt that she was going someplace where she would develop in all those ways. But might we be different from the typical parents writing the check? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, okay. All right. And might the typical parent be right there with the kid saying, you better get a good job out of this. I was thrilled when she had one when she graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really struggling with this. Because, again, when you put the bullseye on the wall, okay, you remember archery? Did everybody take archery during the summer at some point in their life? Everybody might have to take archery. Well, you had the bullseye at 50 yards, and then you had the bullseye, no, 40 yards, and then at 50, and maybe at 75 um, for the long shot. And you built up. So you hit the one at 20, and then you built some efficacy, and then you hit the one at 50, and you built some efficacy, and maybe week three, you're shooting at the one at 100. Okay? That's how people think about their goals. That's how they think about their goals. They're looking at 100 yards and saying, I want a good job. I have to do these two bullseyes. 
to get there. And we're saying, no, graduating from high school, graduating from college, those are the bullseyes that matter. But they're not telling us that. They're telling us, I want to get to the 100 yard away bullseye. And they're going to put a lot of resources into that 100 yards away bullseye. And they're going to put enough resources into the first two so that they get to the 100. And we're not linking this all up in a time-space continuum for them all that well. Okay? Um, the engagement, I feel good when I'm there. I get to do things I like. Um, and then what will happen to me in terms of well-being, I will grow with the help of others. So we're getting back to that idealism. It's part of the picture, but it may not be the whole picture. So I'm going to boil it down. What are, the, what are these definitions? Hope, and we had some great presentations by Sage and Marie on, on hope over the course of these two days. Um, so if you want information, um, take a look at um, their presentations. Hope, um, the ideas and energy we have for the future. Hope is the ideas and energy we have for the future. The more formal definition um, is GPA. Goals thinking plus pathways thinking plus agency thinking. Goals thinking plus pathways thinking plus agency thinking. Goals thinking about how we see the future. Pathways thinking are the ideas. Agency thinking involves the energy. GPA, goals thinking, pathways thinking, agency thinking, future, real clear thoughts about the future. Pathways are the ideas and strategies. Agency, that's the energy, the I think I can, I think I can momentum that gets us where we want to go. Engagement, the way we view it and the way um, and I say we at Gallup and put the Strengths Institute, we call it satisfaction with and enthusiasm for school. Satisfaction with and enthusiasm for school. We don't get into a lot of behaviors. We don't get into a lot of cognitions. We get into feelings and some behaviors and a little bit of cognitions. Okay? So how people feel about where they are and what they're doing, often because we're cognitively conservative, we take that information in and we make a lot of decisions based on how we feel. Well-being, and this goes back to the question, well-being is a hard nut to crack. So James asked, y'all asked James a good question the other night, what is happiness? I, that's the, oops, I use the H word. I don't use the H word, okay? Because well-being is more robust. Um, it's not what we normally think about when we write the word happiness. Uh, there I go again. Um, well-being involves two things, how you see your life and how you feel about your life. How you think about your life and how you feel about your life. So if both of those are good, you have high well-being. If both of those are bad, you have low well-being. If you're somewhere in the middle, then you're somewhere in the middle. But those people who evaluate their life in very positive terms um, then have um, more well-being. People who um, feel um, good then have more well-being. Put them together, they have a lot of well-being. This is the Gallup Student Poll. We're launching this uh, in March. We're doing that with uh, over a million kids. We're asking them uh, 20 questions about hope, engagement, and well-being. And what we're trying to do is make it easier to drive change. If we think about the constructs that were talked about over the last two days, we probably have 75 different ideas. We're saying those are all good. The three that are very good, among the three that are very good, our hope, engagement, and well-being. Let's get behind three that work. We've picked these three. We hope you like them. Let's go at it. So we're measuring hope, engagement, and well-being with over a million kids. And we've done that and college students. So the college student program is right behind the K-12 program. So the K-12 program is ready for prime time. The college student program, the college student um, poll is right behind it. So probably we've piloted it with thousands of folks. We'll be ready probably in uh, fall. You know, what does this cost? As of now, the million kids are getting everything for free. So we're trying to get underwriters, the do-gooders of the world, to pay for advancing hope, engagement, and well-being in American students so that students don't have to pay and colleges don't have to pay. That's the grand plan. Now it's like changing light bulbs. You know, will we get to that point? Um, we think we can. We think we can get this funded so that you guys can just take um, but we'll see how that works out. These are some examples uh, of the items. I energetically pursue my goals. I can find lots of ways around.